Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're doing well and thanks for stopping by my channel. Today I'm bringing you a quick update to my last video, which I admit was a bit on the gloomy side. First off, a huge thank you to all the comments, ideas and support you have been pouring into the comments section. It's amazing to see how a small but passionate community is coming together to tackle these kind of challenges. Many of you have nailed the mechanical side of things, which is seriously impressive. It just goes to show how many different approaches can be taken with this design. I really hope you get something out of this video, and I promise, once everything is finished, I'll share my design with you just like I did with my source code. So, if you haven't seen my last video yet, definitely check it out after this one. In it, I talked about hitting a wall with my ball throwing module. Basically, too much vibration. Since then, I've been on a mission to find a solution. I reached out to everyone from a mechatronics professor at Melbourne University to a freelance designer in Poland. I even connected with my local maker community to get some tips. And not to forget, some of you awesome viewers shared your insights on the ball throwing modules design. The main takeaway, simplify the design and use tried and true parts. That led me to hunt down motors and wheels specifically used in the tennis ball machines instead of relying on generic motors and whatever wheels I could find. <laughs> it cost me 370 freaking US dollars for two motors and two wheels. Now, I don't know what you think, but that's a steal. But, but I really hope it's worth it. These motors have long shafts that take the wheels directly, eliminating the need for couplings. With that, we have solved the motor to wheel coupling issue. Plus, using purpose-made motors and wheels gives us a, a well-balanced setup. So hopefully, that's bye-bye to vibrations. For the other components, I wanted to use gears and pivot mechanisms similar to what the big brands do. Luckily, I found some good designs on the internet. So, I bought a 3D printer. <laughs> now, I know it's a bit excessive for a tennis ball machine because there are some lower end models out there that cost just about the same as my 3D printer. But hey, here's what I've come up with. Let's have a look at the ball throwing module. Here it is. The motors are connected to the main vertical pivoting arm and the wheels go directly onto the motor's shafts, like I said before. There's a bracket that stabilizes the motors when the balls are being thrown out. For vertical motion, I mounted a gear motor directly onto the fixed vertical arm, which drives a small gear that transfers to a larger gear that is fixed to the motor's mounts. When the small gear rotates, the motor assembly swings up and down like this. And using position control that I explained in my previous video, we can control the vertical angles. For horizontal motion, I'm using a worm gear mechanism that swivels a base plate with a gear ending. The base plate sits on a lazy Susan bearing, giving it the freedom to rotate. And finally, the ball feeder is connected to the fixed arm using a duct pipe like this. That's it. I'm waiting on the motors and the wheels and some other parts that I ordered online to arrive. They should be here uh, probably in a week or two. It might seem simple, but all that's left is for me to print these parts and see if everything works as expected. I've been calibrating the 3D printer and working out the tolerances for holes and threads and I've already applied those to the 3D models. Alright, that's all for now folks. I'll see you in the next one. Fingers crossed that I don't waste a lot of filament on failed 3D prints. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, and please send some good vibes for success in the comment section. Thanks for watching and take care.